We are still up to chapter six, Mishnah number six. These are the famous 48 ways to wisdom. And in our last session, we covered way number one, which was with study. How do you acquire Torah? You acquire it with study. And now we're up to way number two, Bishmiya Saozen, with the listening of the ear, of the ear. I always say that this one is, is really close to my heart. As a podcaster and somewhat of an audiophile, the idea that listening of the ear is one of the ways to acquire Torah is very close to my heart. So what is this idea? What does it mean to listen with the ear? And why is this a way to acquire Torah? So we're going to share some of the ideas featured in the commentaries. So the Chassid Yaivetz says something which is really a theme that is found in all places, all kinds of places in Jewish literature. And that is that we really have two main ways to interface with the world. There are two senses that we use to acquire data, knowledge, information from the world, from, from the world around us. And they are with our eyes, we see things. And with our ears, and we hear things. And in the battle of the senses, we discover that according to our philosophy, hearing is much more impactful than seeing. When you hear something and you absorb it in an audio way, in an audio sense, that is likely to bring you closer to Hashem, whereas seeing the eyes the visual interface with the world, that is the domain of the Yetzahara, of the foreign God. So, for example, we're told in the literature that the way of the Yetzahara is ayin roa v'lev chomed. The eye sees something and the heart covets it. And a person only desires what their eyes can see, we're told. Again, in many places, we are told this idea that the eyes are the portals through which bad ideas and bad temptations can enter. Conversely, we're told in the Talmud that one of the characteristics, one of the, I guess, markers, the descriptions that we have of God is roe ve'eno nire. God is roe. He sees, but he cannot be seen. He remains unseen. This is in the Talmud Brachos. This is in the Talmud Brachos, page 10a. And this indicates that if we want to connect to God, we cannot use our eyes because God sees but is unseen. Our eyes, our field of vision is engineered almost to make us not see God. And therefore, to connect to God, we have to use our ears. What does that mean? We have to, we have to hear, we have to listen. We have to listen to our tradition. We have to listen to our antecedents. We have to listen to our messages. We have to listen to our hearts. The declaration of faith that we do every day, multiple times, the Shema, what do we do? We say, Shema Yisrael, listen, hear, O Israel. And we cover our eyes. And that's symbolizing that this touch point of faith that we do every day, that the best way to accomplish it is to listen, to listen very carefully to listen to all those murmurings, to listen for those faint whispers, but also to cover our eyes. I had a thought over Shabbos. You know, for some reason, the Almighty designed us that we have we have little lids, little eyelids, that sometimes our eyes are open and we see everything and then we close them, we see nothing, but the ears don't have any lids. Isn't that interesting? It's not a question most of us think about all the time. The ears, they're permanently opened. You have to really push down or maybe flap over your, your earlobes to cover it. And even then you kind of hear, you hear a little bit, you're able to pick up stuff. But you have these lids on your eyes to just, to just cover it. Why would the Almighty do that? I know it's a strange thought to think about, you know, those little flaps that <laughs> cover our eyes. And at night, they're, they're closed. And then, and then they're, during the day, they're open. But periodically, they have this like, like uh, washing fluid to keep everything lubricated really nicely. 
and they flap down and then they flap back up and you don't even miss anything in the field of vision. Why don't our ears have the similar thing? So I, I want to speculate that maybe, you know, if if the if what we see could be very dangerous, it could be the domain of the Eitz Haram. Everything we see is is not God. God is unseen. Maybe if we didn't have those lids, if we had too much sight, so to speak, it would give the Eitz an unfair edge. And that's why the mind says, okay, I'm going to give you a chance, so to speak, to close your eyes and to be able to listen much more carefully. And through that, you can connect to the Almighty, connect to the spiritual, and almost cordon off, so to speak, the physical world that you see that fills your 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 eyes and your brain with all these images, all these images which are not, of course, God. Audio, we know, also echoes. This past Shabbos, in one of the shuls in our neighborhood, they asked me to serve as the chazan, to lead the services, which I do very frequently. But in this particular room, there's bad acoustics. So, like, you're hearing the echoes of everyone behind you. It's a little bit disorienting. You have to kind of get used to it. You know, with sight, there is no echo. What you see, it's almost like there's, there's, there's no lag. It happens basically instantaneously. You know, light travels around the world, you know, in one second, you know, eight times. It's just lightning fast. And... With light, because it's all instantaneous, there's there's no time to process. You cannot prepare for it ahead of time. And you cannot assess it afterwards because it's gone. It's like a flash. And that's it. Whereas audio, it's much slower. You have time to prepare for it. And even after you hear it once, you hear it again, it reverberates, it echoes, it lingers, it allows you to really process it. The Yetzirah wants us to be working very fast, to not think about things, to not ruminate, to not cogitate, to not evaluate, to not question. Just accept the vision. For us to really connect with, listen, and audio, again, is much more engineered to facilitate the kind of spiritual transformation that is required, of course, to connect with the Almighty and His Torah. My favorite example of this are the two relatives who were not Jews who experienced Egypt or the exodus from Egypt and how they processed it. Jethro, he wasn't a Jew, but Parshas Yisro, this is chapter 18 of Exodus, it begins that Jethro heard everything that happened to Jewish people and he said, I want to join this nation. When he interfaced with the Exodus by listening, he heard he wanted to join. He is related, the Talmud tells us, to Balak, the king of Moab. And this, of course, is in the book of Numbers, Parshas Balak. And he also discovered the absolute juggernaut that was the Jewish people, but he didn't hear it, he saw it. And that partial begins, Parshas Balak begins, Vayar Balak ben he saw everything that Israel had done. So if two partials named after really non-Jews, Jethro converted, but at the time, he was a non-Jew. One partial is called Parshas Yisro, and one's called Parshas Balak, and both of them start off with these respective individuals, the eponymous characters of said story encountering the primacy and the strength and the might of the Jewish nation and their exodus. One saw and says, I got to stymie this nation. I got to stop them. I got to attack them. And he went to hire Bilam. And one heard and he said, I'm going to come join the Jewish people. I am all in. If you are interested, I did a Parsha podcast in January of 2022 on Parshas Mishpatim called Hearing Sinai. And the idea, the basic idea of that entire podcast was about the contrast between sight, the visual way of interfacing with the world, 
and audio and how audio is more spiritual and more likely to connect us to our creator and his Torah. And that's idea number one of this way. Way number two to get to the Torah is to listen and to hear. And that's a form of study and learning that is designed to bring us to the truth, unlike when we see something visually. My grandfather, blessed memory, used to say about this particular way of acquiring Torah, that when you start off studying, you have to listen with your ears, which means we have a, a natural inclination to be creative and to be independent and to want to speculate on our own. We want to say our own ideas. When you start off studying Torah, just listen. Don't try to be a producer, a purveyor of Torah until you are ready. You absorb it, digest it, let it percolate within you. After 50 years of listening, you'll be so replete. You'll be swelling, bursting with Torah. Then you will, in fact, be able to influence others. I say this, say that you know we're required to study Torah and to teach Torah. Lil mode ulalami to, to, to study and to learn and to, and, to, and to teach it onwards. How is that done? It's like a cup. You want to fill the cup. Once the cup is full and you pour more, it overflows. You listen, you listen, you listen. When you start, you just listen, you just absorb. And eventually, that will lead to the overflowing of the cup. You want to influence others as well. It is also interesting. Maybe this is part of the uh, eyelid question. If you count the organs, you know, we're fortunate enough to have two eyes and, uh, and two ears, but only one mouth. I know this is really weirdly hypothetical, but why do we only have one mouth? You got two ears, two eyes, you should have two mouths. I don't know where you would put it, but, but why is it like that? The idea is that we have to listen twice as much, double as much as we speak. The Talmud records an interesting comment from one of the sages that he actually wanted to have two mouths. I have so much Torah to teach. I'm about to speak even more words of Torah. One mouth for written Torah, one mouth for oral Torah. I don't know, one mouth for this subject, one mouth for that subject. Wouldn't that be convenient? But then he said, well, we have such a hard enough time to use our mouth, to use our capacity for speech and not say anything bad, not say any evil talk with only one mouth. We would be doomed if we had two but indeed, we do, in fact, have two ears. And that perhaps is to symbolize the importance of just listening. Now, we know that you listen and you hear with your ears. We don't really need the mission to tell us that. It doesn't say bishmia with listening. You read the words of the Mishnah written with laser-like precision. It doesn't say with listening, with hearing. It says with the listening and the hearing of the ears. It identifies the organ that we used, that, that we use to listen. Why is that necessary? To say with listening. Why say with the listening of the ear? So I remember hearing an idea about this many years ago in the name of Rabbi Shapiro, Rabbi Moshe Shmuel Shapiro. He said. Sometimes people listen, but they don't really understand. And it's only their ears that listen, in one ear and out the other. You've heard of that line? It goes in one ear and out the other. It doesn't really stop in the brain. It doesn't settle down in the brain. Is that beneficial? Is that helpful? So he says it is. Because this mission is telling us, even if the, the listening is, is, is limited to the ear, it's only the hearing of the ear, but it doesn't actually stop and settle in the brain. Even that is impactful. Even if only the ear hears, it penetrates and makes an impact. I have a theory 
that if you really want to change someone, try to get them to listen to something, even if they don't understand or they're not willing to understand it. Just listening to it will change them. My dream is to have people listen to my podcasts as they're falling asleep. So my parents, every night they listen to my podcasts as they're falling asleep. And I, and I think that it's actually the best way to listen to it because as you're going to a lower level of consciousness, you're kind of almost like in a hypnotic state and there's less pushback and you're more, you're more open, so to speak, you're more suggestible. That's when the Torah goes in and your capacity to resist is diminished and I'm able to influence you and change you as you're falling asleep. And you wake up in the morning and you want to be righteous and you don't even know why. <laughs> and it's only because you listen to the, to the podcast at night. I had an idea that to do a podcast for kids, your know, kids, they're always lo looking to listen to something as they fall asleep. To do like a Torah podcast as they're falling asleep, I think it'll be, a, it'll be an amazing way to, uh, to educate. No, not that. To brainwash. No, no, no. no to, to, to indoctrinate. These are all different. These are synonymous. Sorry. To educate, to brainwash, to indoctrinate. These are all synonyms. It's all the same thing. To influence the children when they are receptive, when they're able to listen. Again, if, and even, even if it just goes to the ears, it doesn't really stop. They don't really understand it. It doesn't matter. It fundamentally changes them. One of the sages of the Mishnah was the great Rabbi Yehoshua, Rabbi Shua ben Hananiah. He's one of the teachers of Rabbi Akiva. And we're told that when he was a baby in a stroller, his mom would bring him to the academy just so he should hear, he should listen to the cacophonous din of the sound of the sages debating words of Torah. And the Talmud says that that really impacted him. Well, what does a kid know? A kid doesn't understand anything. They don't know anything. But what they listen, what they hear, even if it's only on the surface level, just in the ears, that, in fact, lands and it changes a person on a subterranean level, on a subconscious level, and we don't see the causality, but what you hear and what you expose yourself to actually changes who you are. You are. Moreover, to listen also means to understand. I think this is something we all suffer from. And you know, how much of what we hear and we're exposed to, how much do we really understand? And of what we and of what we understand, how much do we retain? You know, this applies to reading as well. You read something, you're kind of skimming it. I kind of get the gist of what I'm reading. But do we really listen to the degree that we understand it completely? Part of this way to acquire Torah is to mobilize our listening to make it more active, to understand every idea. That's the benefit of listening to it in the podcast. You could pause, rewind. I missed that. Let me listen to it again. Listen to it at half time speed, or as I like to do, at three times speed. Listen to it twice. We have amazing technology that enables us to really absorb what, what we're exposed to. Understand every idea. Being able to summarize it. Being able to kind of highlight the, the main points of a message. Being able to rephrase it and reformulate it in your own words. That is another level of listening where it's, it's active, not just passive. Let me sit down and relax and listen to Beethoven. No, it's to actually actively listen in a way that you're really able, able to understand it and you're able to summon it later on because you organized it in your brain and now you know, you know it, you know where it fits into the big picture and now it's part of you're acquired, so to speak, learning that this is part of who you are. This is now part of your, your knowledge base. I think this is also important just in general communication. You know, we talk to people every day. 
We speak to people, our co-workers, our students, our teachers, our family members. If you are fortunate enough to ever spend time in a yeshiva, that's what it is you're talking or even streaming at your study partner. And whenever there's a debate or someone's conveying an idea, it's important to learn how to listen. So suppose you have one way of seeing things and your sparring mate, the person that you're talking to has a different way of seeing things. You're, you're arguing, you're debating. Very often people are speaking past each other. Each one's just trying to reinforce their side without actually ever listening. You don't actually ever listen. And there's no productive dialogue and everyone's shocked. Why is there no productive dialogue? We've been talking about this for hours. Because there was no listening. To communicate effectively and beneficially, you have to learn how to listen. Which means for a second, for even a fleeting second, consider the remote possibility that you may be wrong. No, that's not possible. That's not possible. I'm always... No, maybe just for a, for one second, the faintest, faintest possibility... The, the, the most remote consideration that maybe you're wrong and that person is right. So really pay attention to what they're saying. Don't assume that you know what they're saying. And that leads to productive dialogues. And again, that is part of the idea of listening. Just in general communication, certainly in matters of Torah, that is a way to expose yourself to other knowledge. We don't want to be cloistered on our little island. This is what we know and that's it. And we're just badgering those same ideas over and over again. We are trained and we are encouraged to learn from every person. A zehu chacham halo made me call Adam. Who is the wise person? He who studies from everyone. The only way that you can study from everyone is if you learn the great powerful tool of listening and actually trying to understand what they're saying, not just trying to, you know, say non sequiturs and ad hominem attacks and all the fallacies that we do because we're just partisans that just want to say our, our point and never really consider what someone else has to say. Another idea that our sages tell us with respect to this way, listening, and that's to listen to the messages of Hashem. The, even though today we no longer have prophecy, nevertheless, nevertheless, the Almighty is still talking to us. Everything that happens to us in our life, our sages tell us, is really a divine message. If you stub your toe, the Talmud says, that's God trying to get your attention. Everything you see in the world is a reflection that you're supposed to take to yourself, the Baal Shem Tov famously said. Everything, the whole world is a mirror speaking to you. What you see, the flaws that you identify in others are really manifestations of your own personal flaws. Why does the Almighty expose you to the flaws of others? That's really what he's telling you you need to fix yourself. Kal ha posel bemumo posel. Whatever we identify as the flaws in others, that's really a manifestation of our own personal flaws, the Talmud tells us. If you encounter an adulterous woman coming, or a suspected adulterous woman coming to the temple, a sota, the Talmud tells us you have to become a nazir and abstain from wine. You have to take that lesson to heart. And the Talmud tells us that even if you stick your hands in your pocket and you want to pull out a nickel and instead you pull out a quarter and you have to stick your hand in your pocket again to find the right coin, that too is a message from God. And if you go 40 days without any divine communication, that means you are done. The mind's given up on you. So we no longer have prophecy but we'd still have communication with God. That's what we are told in the literature. 
But to actually get those messages, we have to learn how to listen. The Almighty expects great things of us. If he didn't, he would not have created us. But of course, the Yetzirah is very strong, very potent. And the world that he portrays for us and he paints for us, it's designed to make us veer away from God. And we are spiritually asleep. We're asleep at the wheel, forgetting about the grand mission that we are placed in this world to accomplish. But the Almighty is the one who awaits those who are asleep. We say in our prayers, God awaits those who are asleep. God arouses those who are in a slumber. What does that mean? So my grandfather, the Bible used to say, God does not allow us to sleep. Whenever we fall into a pattern of mediocrity, we're not really firing on all cylinders. We're not really living up to the expectations of our soul, of what we're supposed to do. We're not being productive. We're not living up to our potential. The Almighty will jolt us awake. He will not allow us to fall beyond the pale. God is always speaking to us. It's up to us to listen. And that too is part of way number two, to listen. And if we learn And if we learn the great skill and tool of learning how to listen with all its various facets, we are well on our way to prepare ourselves for Torah and for wisdom. I thank you for listening. Listening. I hope you have a great day. And as always, my email address is rabbiwalby at gmail.com. Okay, okay, okay. Who's ready? Who's next? Not all at once. I'm ready. You ready? Okay, go. Hit me. Let's go. All right. So, um, uh, just I need to clarify this. Uh, are you saying that that when I'm when I'm when I'm listening to this to to well, if I may say this, listening to his voice? But the thing is, I I, I need to clarify this. Because uh, I thought that um, maybe the angels are the emissaries of God, and maybe yeah, it's the that, angels that's true. Are speaking. So we have to listen. To, we, have to listen to those, we have to listen to those messages, messages as well. Yes. So of course. It's a, are you? Because I, I don't want to. I don't want to. There's a lot of emissaries. God has a lot of emissaries. The yeah, angels are kind of. I don't want to pretend to myself that I'm actually hearing from him. His own no, voice. No, if, if you hear voices, that's something else. That's something no, else. No, that's... no, 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 no. My, my mind is. I've, like, I'm years, not years uh, of... qualified to remedy. So, not no, no, actually, no, no. no. We don't actually hear prophecy, but it, it means that in our life, in our world, in our interactions, the things that are out of the ordinary are, are sometimes messages from God. We've learned how to listen to those. Yeah, no, I've, 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 I've learned to keep my mind completely still and because uh, I used to be very analytical and now my mind is very, very, very still. Um, and I, I definitely discern uh, what I'm hearing. But the thing, the thing is, um, uh, of what I'm hearing, I, I would rather sort of take counsel in saying, well, this this must be eminent series or... or of God, because they're they they're consistent, progressional, sort of motivational, directional kind of suggestional sort of ways of uh, gradually moving me forward. That's what I'm I'm hearing. I know it's not me. I I, I hear like a, something to prick my consciousness, and all I'm clarifying is, uh, could we could we sort of say that this is coming? Coming from God. That's exactly God what that's, that's exactly what we're saying. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Who's next? Who's next?
Not all at once. Not all at once. <laughs> Rabbi, I have a question. Here, go ahead, Paul. Um, do you know of speaking of listening and um, uh, hearing a nice compliment to the Parsha podcast? I think would be to actually be able to not just read the Parsha, but actually just hear it read to you like a audio book <laughs> or something like that. Do you know of any sources like that where you actually can either download a, a whole portion or can you get a week? I cannot believe you're asking that. I'll tell you why. So uh, my son, Yehoshua, my second son, he's almost bar mitzvah. So he wants to, Akiva didn't want to read from the Torah. And I, I was not going to pressure him to do it. That's just my philosophy. We could debate that a different time. He didn't want to do it. That's fine. I don't want to pressure him. My second son, Yehoshua, does want to read from the Torah. So how do we train the kid to read from the Torah? So there's different ways of doing it. I said, I'll just read the whole Torah, the whole portion for you. I'll record it. And uh, you listen to it. And you could just, you're smart enough to figure it out. Figure it out. So um, I came to the tour center, set up my microphone, and I just read the whole portion. I read the whole portion. And then I, I edited it. So that sounds really nice and polished. And... Um, and I divided it up into the different aliyos, different sections. And then I, I had this thought, maybe there are other people who would like to listen to this. To just listen to the actual Torah as it's read in shul, which with, with, with the proper tune and all that. Not just to read the words, but to read it with the, with, with the cantillation and the, the, what's called the trap, right? The laning of the, of, of the, of the Torah. So I had this idea to make a, a whole podcast, which is just the reading of the Torah. But I'm like, uh, this is something that either one person in the whole world wants to listen to or lots and lots and lots of people. I'm not really sure. So maybe I'll send you I'll send you the copy of it. and You'll tell me if you want to listen to it, though, or if that's something that, if that's what you're referring to. Is that what you're referring to or just the actual reading of the words or the reading of the words the way it's done from a Torah scroll? Which one is it? It's like Paul is frozen. Paul, are you frozen? Yeah. I, for, for me, I was thinking of just reading, just being able to, no, uh, you're frozen. Yes, I'm frozen. Yeah. Can you hear me now? I think so. <sighs> yeah, I think so. So I would just like to be able to, uh, instead of reading the words, like just like I listened to the podcast, um, and sometimes you know, multiple times just to have it wash over me. And the same way I would like to just hear the words of the Parsha as a, just be able to, as it's funny that we're talking about this because I've been looking, trying to find something because um, I would just like to listen to it. And, and just the words, not, not the way, not with the, we're not with tune, so to speak, that it's sung in shul, just the words. Is this my internet or is this Paul's? I think it's Paul's because you're coming. You think it's Paul's? Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, although he can't hear this, but I have a JPS Tanakh um, audio book that has, it's, a, it's, it's the JPS Tanakh in English. That, um, oh, he's talking about that, the English or in Hebrew? English. Oh, he's looking for English. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. So touch the mark and mark will will uh, we'll hook you up with it i don't know if you heard that paul yeah i think you were cut out but the jps tanakh has an audio book you can listen to the whole thing interesting i'll put it in the chat thank you i can hear you i, uh, I would always prefer to listen to something than to read it you can do it while you're doing the dishes or yeah. while you're walking or jogging it's just more convenient i Stephen, we see your lips moving, but I don't hear anything. Oh, you can't hear me? Can you hear no, me now? I can hear you now, yes. Okay. Uh, I think it's internet connections, period. But anyway, um, to piggyback on that, I would like to uh, find where I can listen to um, the Hebrew version with the cantillations. Okay, so uh, I'm going to send you and the other. So send me, um, do I have your email address? I don't have your email address. I'll send it to you. And to the other okay. person who texted me privately about it. In fact, I'm gonna find it right now. So if there's anyone who wants it, 
Uh, let's see. No one wants it. I'm sending an email right now with whoever wants it. Yep, I just shared my email. Can you add my email for that as well, Rabbi? Yes. Mark.e.canner. Thank you. Yes. Thanks. I appreciate this. Where is it? Try to do it from my iPad here, but I don't know how to do it from my iPad. Oh, here we go, media files. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to send the entire parish. I, I did a bunch of different files. I did one yeah. that has the um, one that has the entire parsha, and one that has, and then seven that have you know all, all of them individually. Okay, I'm sending the email right now. Uh, compose. I appreciated today's Mishnah because I always listen to the Parsha on Audible, and it always feels like a lower form of learning somehow. But uh, mm -hmm. I guess you've just disabused me of that notion. I love it. Great word, disabused. I love it. Stephen W. Block. I know this is riveting for you guys to watch me type this email. Riveting. Again, thank you. I really appreciate this. Sure thing. And uh, Mark, anybody else wants this? Mark E. Cantor? Who else? Anybody else wants it? <laughs> Me too, Rav, please. Do I have your email address? Uh, yes. Yeah, I do. Uh, 1510? Yes. That's Who it. else? Who else? Anybody? <laughs> Nobody else. Okay. Uh, reading of the Torah in in Hebrew. Oh, anybody else? Anybody else before I send it? Last chance. <laughs> no, never last chance. You can always email, send it to you again. Okay, so I'm gonna email you a link. You just click the link and it'll, it'll play it. Thank you. Boom, sent. Okay. Can you do it every every Parsha? Mm, I, I, maybe. Yeah. I'm considering doing it. Right now, I just did one, which is Parsha Shoftem, which is in a couple of weeks, a couple of months, really. So, But just to see if there's something that interests you, because, because it's all in Hebrew, and it's all the, you know, the laning. It's just, uh, you know, just the actual words and the way they're, they're read it, the, the proper way. Because, you know, um, there's if you look at a Torah scroll, you won't find any commas or periods or exclamation points or anything like that. Uh, you won't find any of that. So what is the punctuation? You know, how do you know what's the end of a sentence and what's the, you know, so the way it's done is with what's called cantillation marks. And that's not featured in the actual Torah, Torah scroll. You have to just memorize that. But you, you, you look at a chumash, you'll see all these like dots and dashes and all these different symbols above and below, below the letters and how they, how they, um, the sounds that they make and, and the stress that you're supposed to put on which particular part of the word. So all that's wrapped into the uh, cantillations. Yeah. Okay, Nancy's voting for a new parsha, a new channel. Reading each parsha in Hebrew. Yeah, I, I consider doing that. I really consider doing that. So this will be like the first installment to see if you like it. Maybe, Nancy, you listen to it first and you think, that, like, is this something that I would enjoy listening to every week? Because if not... Then I don't want to be the fool who does something that just there's literally no appetite for. Hey, Rabbi, do you remember you? Uh, um, you've got so much going on, you probably don't. But a few months ago, you and I were texting, and something about six children, six podcasts. And I said, <laughs> well, I "Why don't you that. start a seventh <laughs> podcast?" Okay, so now you've got seven kids. You've got to have that seventh <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I do remember that, and uh, don't assume that I forget things. That's just a good rule. Yeah, I, remember, I even remember what you said. I remember exactly what you said. So yes, um, what, what I was thinking about that because I, I had texted Sandy and said, "Well, I have six, I have six kids and six podcasts." 
So Sandy would say, well, if you have, you have another podcast, you have to add another kid. Now, maybe if you add another kid, you have to add another podcast. Um, but my answer to that is, because I have the one podcast that incorporates all of the other six, so it's really seven different channels. Even though one of them just aggregates all of them to one, but it's still considered its own channel. So that's my answer. But yeah, I, I would like I would like to do launch more more channels. I have a bunch of ideas that I'm working on. So I'm this hoping for a half tower podcast. <laughs> well, you know my friend, my friend Noah. Noah Katz has a great half tower podcast. Uh, right. It's called Lachaim Lachaim. Writing it down. L apostrophe Chaim, L apostrophe Chaim, C H A I M. He calls it the whole half Torah. I, I play in words, whole half, whole half Torah. He does a great job, and I actually promoted it on one of my sh- my podcast. A few times I think I promoted it. He does a great job. He's um, a exquisite young man. Uh, I think he's a lawyer. Noah from Cincinnati. Um, he went to yeshiva in Israel. Very special young man. He, he has like um, he's like really clever. Also, he has, it starts off with a poem, and then he explains it and gives lessons. Does a really good job. L'chaim, l'chaim. I'm subscribed. This is what it looks like. Where is it? Here. Is he still in Cincinnati? Here, it's called l'chaim, l'chaim. Okay. Uh, maybe, maybe I don't know if he's in Cincinnati. Okay. It's As only 100 the miles away from me. Exile so. increases. Yirmiyahu bought Israeli land for seven shekel and ten silver pieces. After the sale, Yirmiya prayed that the Jews would return to Israel and not be betrayed. Okay. So he always has a poem, like a little, little rhyme. To start off every podcast, which is just super clever, I think. Anyhow, got it. Just found it. He does a really good job. Researches it well. Yes. So I recommend it for the half hour. The rabbi. Yes. Go ahead, Marilu. Would you just repeat the um, podcast that you were talking about earlier about seeing and hearing? Yes, it's called Hearing Sinai. Hearing okay. Sinai. Okay, thanks. Uh, and it was, I'll tell you when it was released, if you want to know precisely. Uh, three months ago, January 26th, 2022. Thank you. Okay. Rabbi, that, yes, that podcast is under what a heading? Uh, it's the Parsha. Uh, Parsha podcast. Parsha? Okay. Yeah, for Parsha's yeah. Mishpatim of this year. So in the middle of Exodus. Now know. we're we're up to Parsha's Bichu Krosa, which is the last installment yeah. of uh, uh, Yikrus, Leviticus. Right. So this was like the middle of, of Exodus. Mishpatim. So, Rabbi, uh, also, if if anybody goes, um, wants to come to Beth Yeshurun for services, I Every Shabbos in the chapel, of course, they read the whole Torah portion. Um, mm-hmm. And that gives me a, a lot of satisfaction to hear it live and see how they do it. You know, I, I enjoy I it. I was thinking, like, like during the pandemic, I was thinking of doing this. Like, because no one was going to shul. I like, right. people want to hear the Torah. Um, and even if you don't understand it, you know, because it, it has, like, a right. sing-song feel to it. Um, it does very motivated i don't know it gives me a lot of satisfaction i and then of course if you listen to your partial podcast and i also do a partial podcast with faith grossman and uh deborah cohen so i feel like it's even though i i don't understand the hebrew words i i believe you know you can read the english along with it you feel too. like you have a connection with it yes yes thank you yeah so yeah, I'm I'm still considering it. I thought to do it, and I, the truth is, I'm not really qualified to do it because I'm not really an expert at, at at reading from the Torah. I could do it because I'm, I just train myself, but I'm not like, I'm not like really qualified. I wasn't like really trained to do it. You know, I was the sixth kid in the family. You don't understand. This is a different level. You know, I always say that like I'm I'm the margin of error of the family. Sometimes they think about me, sometimes not. Whatever. Uh, so like the sixth kid, like they, no one was training me how to lane, how to read from the Torah. Well, yeah, you can pick it up on your own. 
it's a full contact sport. Yeah, you know? whatever you whatever you want, you got to take. You got to fight for it. <laughs> so, um, anyhow, so so that was uh, my concern. But yeah, maybe. Listen, you guys listen to it. Whoever I sent the email to, listen to it. Let me know if, we, if you think it's good. If you listen to it every week, then I'll, I would consider it. You know, if there's again, if there's an appetite for it, I'll do it. Because it's it's a lot easier. I assure you, it's a lot easier than preparing an actual podcast. A lot easier. Because you don't need to think about it. You just read it. It's just simple. And thankfully, I could do it. Like, I could read Hebrew and I could, you know. So if there is an interest, I would I would do it. So let me know. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, y'all have a great week. This was so much fun. So, so, so much fun. And uh, please, God, next week, same time. Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm looking forward yes, to that. Yes. You take care. Have a great week. And uh, we'll see you next week. Yep. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks, Rabbi. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>